Hello, and uh, I'm going to um, show you how to work with uh, regions of numbers, memory addresses, and also addition of groups of numbers to other groups of numbers on a spreadsheet. And uh, I've got Excel 2003 open here. And uh, what I'm going to do, I have the numbers um, 1 through 5. Oops. I have the numbers 1 through 5 arranged in some kind of random order. You don't have to use the same numbers I'm using. You could use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, you can use 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 5, 3, 1, 2, 4, whatever. You can do it any way you like. Uh, but they have to be non-repeating and they have to be the numbers from 1 to 5. So we're just going to make a square of these and I'm going to show you how to copy regions, uh, copy cells onto other cells. Like if I want to copy D2 onto A2, or sorry, D, I don't mean D2, I meant D1. Copy D1 onto A2. Well, one way to do it is to put an equal sign and then click on the cell I want to copy and notice the address shows up, D1. And, and then I hit enter and I get uh, A, um, uh, A2 being equal a2 being equal to 2. So in cell B2 I want E1. I want that 4 down here. So these last two numbers really the idea is to be the first two numbers here. So I'm gonna make this E4. You can also type it in. Oh sorry E1. You could also type it in. Um, uh, you don't have to click on the cell. And using the tab key uh, I automatically can go to the next space while having that number uh, dutifully placed into cell 2 uh, B2. Now I'm going to copy A1, B1 and C1 so uh, A1 uh, equal sign B1 oops and equal sign C1 and notice I have now uh, 2, 4, which are the last two numbers of the first row, and 3, 5, 1, which are the first numbers of the previous row, making the last numbers of this row. Because uh, Microsoft Excel has the ability to um, recognize relative cell addresses, and what a relative cell address is, is simply typing equal sign C1 if I mean cell C1. Uh, that is as opposed to absolute cell addresses like dollar sign C dollar sign one. Um, that fixes that selection exactly on cell C1 and no other cell. But I don't want that. I want relative cell addresses because that's that's what makes the construction of this uh, magic square really cool. Okay, so we uh, we simply just that's why we're simply just typing C1 after the equal sign when we mean cell C1 because when we use relative cell addresses all a relative cell address means in this case is to to basically copy values of the of the row above into the row below in a certain pattern and the pattern I specified was that the last two be made the first two and the first three of the previous row be made to the last three of this row. And I do this for three more cells and by the way um, what I do you see this little square down here on the end of the selection of that row. Uh, I place my cursor over it. Notice the cursor changes shape to a, a narrow black plus and I drag it down so that I have three more rows copied and there we go. Now I have a 5 by 5 square of the numbers from 1 to 5 uh, with this repeating um, this repeating uh, copying pattern being applied to every row uh, below the first. So that's my first square and I'm gonna make one more um, before I start adding them. I'm gonna have a total of three squares so this second square will be the numbers 0, 5, 10, 15, 20. Okay, so another 5 by 5 square. It will consist of numbers and multiples of 5 starting from 0 and ending in 20. So I don't know. They And they can be in random order too. So 10. Oh, 
Why am I putting equal sign? I don't need an equal sign if I'm entering a raw number. And by the way, notice it makes no difference to the result. But I'm just going to put a 10 there because the equal sign is kind of redundant, really. 10, 5, 0. Hello? Oh, I got these silly messages here. 10, 5, 0, um, 20, 15. Okay. That's what I just did. Now, uh, the copying now is going to be a little different, slightly different, where I'm going to copy the last three instead of the last two onto the first three here. And the first two will be the last two here. So here we go. J, or sorry, I1, equal sign I1, equal sign J1, equal sign K1 and then g1 and h1 so equal sign g1 and equal oops and oops and g equal sign h1 little uh, you got to watch your typing garbage in equals garbage out as they say i do the same copying because the relative cell addresses guarantee that the operation I did to the row above to produce the row below will be repeated over and over again and we get this wonderful pattern. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this square of numbers to this square of numbers. It's exactly like matrix addition. Exactly like make matrix addition. So. Um, we have basically um, equal sign. Now I'm going to, okay, I'm going to show you what I'm going to add first. I'm going to add the first row and first column of the first group of numbers to the first row and first column of the second group of numbers. We can call them matrices if you like. In fact, um, these, for, for the purpose, purposes of matrix math, this 5 by 5 represents exactly a 5 by 5 matrix. And this group of numbers, this second group, represents another 5 by 5 matrix. And we're going to do matrix addition. Um, so I'm going to add this group, numbers of this group, to numbers of this group to produce a third group. In fact, if I add a 5 by 5 matrix to another 5 by 5 matrix, what I get is a 5 by 5 matrix representing the sums of every cell to every other cell of both matrices uh, that I began with. So I have here A1, I have here G1, and I'm going to add them both together here. So uh, equal sign A1 plus G1. There you go. So if I get that, I get 3 plus 10, which is 13, and that's exactly what it figures out the, the total is being. The next is because I used relative cell references, if I go to the cell next to it, this must this is going to result in B1 B1 plus H1. Well, let's try that out. So if I move that over to here, that's exactly what I got, B1 plus H1. Okay, so and that's 5 plus 5, which is 10. Well, let's do this for the other remaining three squares. So I added C1 plus I1. Okay, that's 1 plus 0, and of course what I got from that is 1. I have 2 plus 20 to make 22, that's D1 plus J1. And finally we have e, uh, E1 plus K1, that's 4 and 15, and that makes 19. Well, if we can do that, if we can get away with that with a whole row, we can get away with that for a whole matrix. So we can drag that little square down and now we have the finished product. This is a 5x5 five five magic square. In fact, why don't we make it look pretty? Well, not really that pretty, actually. All I want to do is place a border around it and maybe a relatively thick line. So um, let's just put that there. And now we have our magic square. Notice some features of the magic square. They consist of the numbers 1 through 25, non-repeating. Uh, if you look at that long enough, um, you will actually, in fact, I, I, might even, I might even increase the view here. Um, let's go to 150%. 
uh, that's 105, 150. And um, we can actually see, if you, if you want to stop the video and see for yourself, these are the numbers, 1 through 25, non-repeating, in some kind of random order. You can so, sort of discern from this magic square that there really is no, no discernible pattern to the numbers. Uh, other um, other video blogs have um, tried to produce a five by five magic square consisting of um, numbers arranged in a distinct pattern where numbers move along some kind of diagonal, and um, and uh, you can see that there is no discernible diagonal pattern. One, two, three, four, five. 6 7 there's no real there's no real pattern here but nevertheless all of these numbers will add up to 65 and remember we introduced this whole magic square by randomly arranging these numbers to begin with these were random arrangements of numbers and we ended up producing a random arrangement of numbers that will now have magical properties and I'm going to show you well all of the rows columns and both diagonals will add up to the same sum well let's try it out I'm going to use an Excel spreadsheet function called sum you have to enter equal sign and then the word sum and highlight you can highlight the range of cells that you're summing or do D7 to H7 and don't forget the colon in the middle. But what I just did is I highlighted those squares that I wanted to add and then um, closed my bracket. And what do I get? I get 65. Well, let's see if we get the same thing on the next row. So sum, open bracket, and then I highlight this row. This is D8 to H8 now close my bracket and enter and I get 65 it looks to me as though 65 looks like the magic number for this square well um, I can do this and copy that so that every other row is summed up appropriately you can see that doing this magical copying that Excel is good at doing also results in the the right kind of responses well, we can also do the same to columns. So we can sum a column and open a bracket, highlight, and then close bracket, and then 65. And then uh, just because I'm lazy, I just want to copy that result all the way across. And you can see that we actually do in fact get, oops, we actually do in fact get um, the exact sum of the exact columns that we want. Uh, no, no cheating. Um, now, what I want to do now is add numbers along a diagonal. If I want to check my check my work, and I'm moving along a diagonal, I want to actually add 13 plus 24 plus 7 plus 16 plus 5, and I want to put place the value here. Now, I can actually do the references like this. Click on 13 and add a plus and notice the cell reference is what gets placed on there click on 24 plus click on the 7 click on the 7 plus click on the 16 plus and then click on the 5 notice that now all five all five cell references are there and as you can see here everything is highlighted as they are supposed to be highlighted i can enter i can hit the enter key and i get the number 65 after adding all of that. I can also go over here and do the same thing again. Don't forget the equal sign in front and then click on the 21 and hit the plus sign from the keyboard, add the 3 plus sign, 7 plus sign, 15 plus sign, and then 19 and then hit enter. So everything is now 65. Well okay that's a magic square. Okay definitely a magic square. But uh, one, of the, one of the properties of a 5x5 five five magic square is that it is hyper magic. Hyper magic means that there are many, many different arrangements of numbers on this same square that will also add up to 65, and I'll show you what they are. 
For example, take any 3x3 three three arrangement anywhere on the square. Oh, you, know, you can take the first one. You can take, say, this one. You can take this one. You can take that one. You can take that one. Any, any one at all. There's nine of them. Nine, nine different 3x3 three three arrangements. Add the four corners of that 3x3 three three arrangement plus the one in the middle. Thus wise, 13 plus 1 plus 24, the, three cor the four corners plus the one in the middle, so plus 20 and plus 7. That's five numbers arranged in a 5x5 five five pattern. We get 65. As I said, there's three of those across the top. So we want all three of those, and me being a lazy person, I will just simply do that. And just to show you that I'm not making this up, there it is there, and there's the last one. Okay, so they're, they're all different. <coughs> I will also do the one below it, okay? And of course, these are all 65. There's that arrangement, that arrangement, and this arrangement as you can see they're all different arrangements and they all add up to 65 well we can also do that to the bottom uh, the bottom set of three squares that one oops that one and that one they're all going to add up well there's also another arrangement within the same three by three squares which um, form a cross pattern uh, i'll show you oops that's not what I wanted. I wanted to click here. So equal sign. And this time I'm going to start in the same place. So I'm adding my 10 to 24 to 11 to 2 and to 18. And oops, and you get 65. So going across like this, I get my 3, of course, and just to check them. You can see that that's exactly what we get. Highlight that. And remember, we got three of those arrangements. So there's nine ways that we can get 65 with that pattern, with the cross pattern, or the plus pattern. You know, if you like calling it a plus pattern. Maybe, maybe these were cross patterns, if you like. But anyway, so these are all pluses, and they're all different. OK? And uh, of course, there's a, there's another arrangement too. There's one where, for example, um, if I take uh, if I take the four corners of the entire square, 13 plus 19, oops, plus 19, plus the middle square, plus the two bottom corners, so plus 21 plus 5 we get 65. And of course, if you, if you also add um, the top and bottom numbers, in fact, the five numbers in a plus pattern, you also get that too. So that one, 1 plus 23 plus 7 plus 20 plus 14. We also get 65. Uh, it gets weirder than this. Uh, if if this can, if <laughs> if if any such weirdness can be imagined, but it does get weirder. <clears throat> if you recall, we had two ways of having diagonals, but actually there are many more ways of getting diagonals than you actually think. In fact, all of these all of these patterns um, can, uh, if you open up, if you uh, imagine this square wrapped around into a tube, you now increase your possibilities of getting 65 if you go across the borderline of, say, you know, the numbers along the edge to numbers along this edge, um, you increase, uh, you greatly increase the number of, uh, of possibilities um, of getting the number 65. It, it's rather amazing you, know, you sort of wrap this into a tube. Well, on a, on a spreadsheet, that's kind of easy to do. I can actually highlight that whole thing. Hit Control C and paste that same cell here. Paste it here. 
in fact, I'm going to paste it in four places. Um, paste it here. And, ooh, hello. Oh, I see what I did wrong. There's a problem, Houston. I, I have a problem the way I chose to paste this. If I do control C, oops, I didn't want to do that control C. I want to do a control C here. That copies, but I don't want to just paste the numbers. Notice what happened here. If I do control V to do a paste like you would in, um, say, uh, Microsoft uh, Word, uh, you notice you get a completely bizarre pattern of numbers that has no resemblance to the original cell. So Control Z undoes this operation. What you want to paste are not the relative cell references. In fact, you're not even interested in the cell references. All you want are the values of the numbers. So you go up to Edit and you go to Paste Special. So you go to Paste Special and all you want it to select are the values and that's it. So you paste the values and there you go. Now you got the numbers you want. And now you can select these with Control C and I don't believe that these will be harmful anymore. I think you're gonna get exactly what you want to get. So Control V and Control V. Now you have um, four, if you want to, by the way, um, you, you may have noticed uh, if you select a region, notice how these you get these kind of dashes that sort of go around the region that you selected. Um, they're referred to as marching ants. So if you want to get rid of the marching ants, you hit the escape key, notice, and just click on any cell and that gets rid of the selection. So um, now we have wide vistas opened up uh, by which we can now do new additions. Now we have to remember, maybe just for reference, I am going to put a box around this uh, set of cells. Okay, I'm going to put a box around that because we want to remember that this is what we had originally. Right? We want to remember that. Okay, so we put a box around there. Okay, and I, I, I want to do some additions of cells that go beyond this box, but I want to make a rule that at least one of the selected cells for addition must be in that box. Okay, and if you do that, then you can um, go in this direction, you can go in this direction, and of course you can go off in a diagonal into this direction. Okay. Um, what's missing is the upward and to the left and uh, on the upward diagonal. If you're worried about that, because that opens up still more possibilities, select this cell and work from this box also. So um, uh, go to Format Cells, get that box going. Um, and hit OK. So we actually have really two boxes here. So one rule is that we're not allowed to get outside this box and we got to work with some kind of orderly in, in some kind of orderly fashion here because like for example if I want a 9 by 9 you know if I want to if I want to work from this box here and add uh, arrangements of this th this set of numbers together um, well, I guess technically speaking, um, that's a compromise. You have to be very careful about the counting about how many ways you can get 65 here because, uh, well, um, if I work from this box, 13, 12, and 20, and I want to use that not three by three arrangement, I can do it from this box, but I can't do it from this box. You notice there's, there's nothing here. There's nothing beyond. There's nothing on that side. So, But if I want to work from this side, sure, I can do that. I can also do this. Okay. Uh, so there's numbers available working from this box that are not available from working from this box. Okay. And uh, also to avoid double counting, anything that's completely inside this box has already been counted. So don't reinvent the wheel. 
Um, let's say that we want to add this 3 by 3 arrangement going from here to here. Now remember we're imagining that this magic square were wrapped around like in a tube. So on the other side of that tube if we if we see the numbers 13, 10, 22, 19 as we rotate the tube, we come back to 13 again as we keep rotating in the same direction. So number so 3 by 3 arrangements like 22, 19, 13, 15, 6, 2, 4, 23, 20, like this one, become possible. So we can now uh, add um, such arrangements together, like for example 22 plus 13 plus um, 6 plus uh, 14, uh, sorry, 4 plus 20. Enter, and we get 65. Now, if we get 65 there, we'll also get 65, oops, we'll get 65 for the one below it. So, um, this will also be a possibility, and notice it bleeds into the square that is its next door neighbor. And one more, there's also one more. So there's that. Now also, if you actually um, go to go in this direction, notice you get that square, and also that's not possible uh, simply by staying inside one square as well. And uh, we can do that for two more, two more tries. Okay, so we get this one and we get this one, okay? Um, also, um, well, we can, we can keep going because uh, if we can get that one, then we can, we can get, say, this one, which is that. And notice it's actually bleeding into the square below it and to the right, so it's all kinds of stuff is happening, and we can do this one too, okay? Well, for that matter, we could have done the same thing to this square and keep going. We can just keep going down like that to get this and down one more to get this. Now, if you, um, well, uh, there's also something else too. Um, those are, you can also try all the possibilities of that. I'm not going to go into all of them because uh, that would make this long video even longer. But uh, another sum that you might want to consider trying. Remember that we did diagonal sums here. Well, we can do this diagonal as well. That diagonal goes outside the box into the wraparound, into the 21. It's kind of like taking these four and adding this one. It's like, again, wrapping things around in a cylinder. So um, taking that sum, 10 plus 18 plus 4 plus 12 plus 21 also makes 65. We can do that for, f for actually four different squares here. Notice there's many diagonals that are possible here. Okay, well, if we can do it for those four, we can do, well, I don't know if we can do it for the ones below, but that would be very interesting. In fact, I'm wondering if, well, they all work out to 65. And notice we can take diagonal, five member diagonal arrangements just about anywhere in that magic square and get the same thing. And of course, don't forget the leftward, um, leftward arrangements going the other way. So if we can do, remember 19, 15, 7, 3, and 21, well, we can also take care of 6, 4, 25, and 17. So here's another one. In fact, we'd have to begin with 13 here on the other square. So um, equal sign, okay, plus that plus that plus that plus that and that's 65 well there's four more well four of them not four more but four of them and notice uh, that's the last possible diagonal in that direction because the five is highlighted if we if we now do a, a fifth one over here that completely breaks our rule and notice that 23, 
21, 3, 7, 15, and 19 are the exact same numbers here, and we're just double counting. So you've got to be careful of that. Okay, well, if we can do that, then we can do that to the other five rows, and we can just go like that. So there's 20 of those, and pick any, pick any cell at all just to check your work, uh, and you'll get... Um, you'll get numbers that are actually that doesn't look that looks like we've broken our rule here I don't think we I don't think we want to allow that one unless we're gonna unless we're serious about working from this square right if we're serious about working from this square which we're not yet I'm, I'm only working from this square this one so I'm going to temporarily delete that but you can add it back in once you start working with this square and what's that one that's also not allowed either so let's see that one's not allowed and that one's not allowed because it's completely outside and let's see if we broke any others yeah okay so that one that one isn't that one isn't that one isn't but that one is that one's good because the five is in there okay so um, that one isn't so we've got to delete that. That one isn't. Delete it. But this one is. Notice the 5 is part of the sum, so we'll keep it. That one isn't, but the last one is. So, okay. So we didn't, we couldn't do 20. This is more like 10. <laughs> we couldn't, uh, we couldn't do 20 squares that way, but we ended up with 10 more. And uh, like I say, there's many more arrangements of 65. In fact, how many arrangements did we come up with? That's an interesting question. In fact, um, I know the number I came up with is rather low. I mean, I, this is we did not explore anywhere close to all the possibilities. But if you wanted to know how many how many arrangements of 65 there were you can do a countif command on an empty cell so equal sign countif okay open bracket and then uh, allow for your range and that's just b7 to t24 close your bracket no don't close your bracket your criteria is you want to count how many 65s there are so just put the 65 there close your bracket now and hit enter I only came up with 72 ways that uh, 65s uh, that sums of 65 can add up um, remember uh, like I say if you're if you're using this wraparound magic square which I call a wraparound I guess because spreadsheets don't do wrapping very well um, unless you force the issue somehow uh, work within the rules that all your sums must come from that square and um, once you're finished working with this square and you start working with this square that all your sums should come from this square uh, at least one of the cells should exist in here or in here okay so uh, I would like you, if you like to explore this, uh, explore these possibilities of how many ways you can get 65. Uh, I am told by some video blogs that uh, there are thousands of ways. Um, I once did a rather exhaustive examination of this using 5x5 five five magic squares. I don't believe there are thousands of ways. I would say hundreds. Um, I would say probably between two and three hundred ways of getting a sum of 65. I mean, the 72 uh, figure you see in front of you is rather disappointing, but it's only because I want to keep the video short. But you could, like I say, you could um, find all manner of ways by which to get 65. And like I say, I invite you to explore those possibilities.